So I'm here today, a uh, lucky student am I, to be with one of my favorite drummers and one of the best educators and a DC faculty teacher on Drum Channel. That's right. Uh, Chad Wackerman. Thanks, Don. Nice Chad, to be here again. Chad, yeah, and this is really exciting. Um, we're going to get an insight into your mentor and teacher. And there's an awful lot of talk about Murray Spivak. And tell me your experience with Murray. When you started, how old you were? I was very, very fortunate. Um, uh, make a long story short, um, my father is a, is a drummer, and I'm a music educator. And his, my dad's uh, favorite drummer from when he was younger was Louis Delson. And um, I showed a, I was playing drums for, for a few years. And um, by the time I was 12, uh, Dad decided to write Louis a, a letter and um, to ask if, if uh, his son, meaning me, uh, could take drum lessons from him. Secretly, I think Dad wanted to take lessons himself. But, uh, anyway, Dad wrote a letter, and, and uh, Louis Delson, being as, as such a wonderful human being as, as we know he is, as he was, um, wrote a four-page letter, handwritten letter back, explaining that he was too busy at the time. He was playing Pearl Bailey's show, his wife, and, and um, doing his, his big band explosion on, on his own and didn't have the time. But he recommended his teacher. Louis Delson's teacher was Murray Spivak. And so my dad then contacted Murray Spivak and asked if, um, if we could both take lessons from him. You and your father? My father and myself, yeah. And, and he called him, and Murray called back and said, well, yeah, that's fine. I can, I can book you in, but I have a six-month waiting list. And so he said, OK, we'll put us on the list. And sure enough, six months later, um, we get a call, and, and dad drives us up to, we lived in the Seal Beach, Long Beach area. It's about an hour drive up to Hollywood, and he had his teaching studio in you know studio complex in Hollywood. So, uh, yeah, when I took lessons from Murray Spivak, it changed everything. I was 12 years old, and so it was it was a long, long time ago. But it's you know it's the things that he showed me is are the things that I still practice. He only believed in teaching hands and reading. He was a great teacher for reading and an amazing teacher for hands, and a lot of the LA players um, and players from all over the country too would, would go to him to get their hands straightened out. So I mean, endless list: Carlos Vega, Joey Heredia, Vinny Colaiuta took a few lessons. Uh, Chuck Flores, who was my other my, my drum set teacher, uh, took from him. Obviously, Louis Belson. I mean, the list goes on and on. Of great, great, amazing musicians. Uh, so when we went up there for my first lesson. He asked me to play the most basic things. It was on a practice pad. His setup was a practice pad, a mirror, a clock, and a metronome. And that was your practice setup, too. You had to have those things. But he showed me the, the fundamentals. I thought I could play rolls and paradiddles and things, but um, he proved to me really quickly what I couldn't do. Before that, you had studied with your father, I assume. Yeah, I'd oh. studied with my father. And uh, uh, just a couple lessons from, scattered lessons from various drummers, but it wasn't in a kind of methodical way. It was just kind of random. So Murray was your first real teacher. And, and I first saw you play when you were 13. So I guess you had a, a year of Murray under your belt so, yeah. at that point, And you were amazing then. Well, I don't know about that, but I was, I was working on it. I was there. Sure. You were 13. <laughs> you were amazing then. I Thanks, know. Don. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, he, sh you know, he showed me a, a way to play where the outcome of putting in all this work it, it meant that drumming all of a sudden was easy. I wasn't having to struggle. I wasn't having to work anymore. He had a system which involved a lot of economy of motion and, um, and relaxation. And he had a, a, one of his mottos was, the faster you play, the more relaxed you have to be, which is the opposite of what everybody does. Everybody pushes and, and kind of power, tries to power through. But he said, no, if you play systematically with his system and then go through all these exercises playing relaxed, you practice them, and you get faster and faster at them, but you stay at that relaxed feel. So you're never sweating. You know, you're never having to really even muscle anything, because you had other tricks to get a lot of power without using actual full, big, large arm motion. So on my first lesson, you know, he proved to me in about 10 minutes exactly what I could do, and, and, and more importantly, what I could not do. So he evaluated you? Yeah, within 10 minutes, he, you know, we played. And he, and after playing these basic things, he said, look, um, drumming is comprised of 
four small basic elements. It's single strokes, or you can call them wrist strokes, uh, which is bas basically this. You know, we played from a, a, a very low low point off the drum. Um, I, I'm going, I've been doing some research, and because a lot of it I don't remember, you know, the terminology. But I think it, I think he used the term relative floor. So your hand wasn't up in the air to start with. It was pretty much maybe a half inch or so off the pad, your, your arms. So it was very low, but just playing basic single strokes. So the first element of drumming is single strokes. The second element is rebound strokes, where you'd have a wrist and a throw, or multiple throws. But that's a, a rebound. So your wrist is not turning multiple times, just throwing. The third element would be flams. And the fourth element was a closed roll. And he said, that's it. That's what we have as drummers. So it's really, really important to be able to play these things. Anything else you play is just sequences of these things come before or after it. But those are the combinations. You can play anything with, with that. As we talked a little bit earlier, which was extremely interesting for me, is looking at all the rudiments are going to relate back to you perfecting this. all of those four things. It's everything. It's, it's all the mechanics is in the single, the rebound, the flam, and the, and the closed roll. And there's, there's a few other elements there's, uh, which we'll get into. Sure. But as far as what you play, yeah, you can play everything with those. And it's, it's equally interesting because when I see you play, and the more I understand about you explaining that, you can see that in your playing. And you can see that as you're moving around the drum set. You can see that as you're approaching the snare drum, how relaxed you are. Well, that, again, is, is because of Murray. students the only reason I got through those playing really loud with Frank Zappa for all those years for doing three months rehearsal eight hours a day at full volume you know we had three guitar players in the band it was a loud rock and roll how much sonic. rehearsal well we would uh, first tour we rehearsed for three months eight hours a day and then you know some tours were maybe two months or so if it was the same band or if it was a new band it'd be typically three months again but you know, playing five, six nights a week, two-hour shows, and playing two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour sound checks, which were re rehearsals on the road, essentially, um, at, at very loud, powerful volume. I never had any muscle problem. I never had, my hands never got sore. And uh, it's all because of Murray. And you say system that he had. And, and when he said he had uh, an opening in six months, I mean, it's hard for a teacher to know when are you going to have an opening because you don't know when somebody's going his, to leave. But. His teaching was very, very systematic. Uh, he gave you, I mean, everybody would, would, you might, if you were a more advanced player, you would start it further down the road. But I think for most of us, he started us over. I, I really do. Uh, you know, I, I think Vinnie Kaliuta, he told me he came in for a couple lessons and I think his turn, you know, he, he said, yeah. A uh, kid's got a fine set of hands. <laughs> so I said, yes, he does. <laughs> so you mentioned he has a system. Uh, most teachers wouldn't know six months from now that they're going to have an opening, because how do you know how long somebody's going to take? Was it, is that structured? You, you, studied, you started, and he knew it was going to take X amount of time, and then you would go on your own? I, you know, I'm guessing a little bit, but I, but I believe so. It was very, very systematic. You know, there, there were certain... Um, all the fundamentals that you'd learn, then you'd learn the more expanded rudiments. You'd, you'd go through stick control, many reading books, uh, including Louis Belson Odd Time reading, uh, uh, 
yeah, Podemsky was one of the books. Uh, Lange was a book. Uh, anyway, it, yeah, it was it was a system, and, and you kind of graduated from the system, which didn't necessarily. He he gave you everything you needed really to then continue, and in, and in, in, you could you know much increase your speed with with everything, but he didn't believe like he needed to sit through you doing the same thing over and over just because you want to play faster. He gave you all the stuff, so then it was up to you. Uh, he didn't believe in teaching style, but he, he gave you the mechanics, the fundamentals of drumming, and showed, showed you how to read really well and, and be able to sight read and play kind of classical snare drum literature. But every student probably brings away from their teacher, you know, after a period of time, their own individuality and puts it in it, you know. Sure. Also, but I think building the machine, and what we're talking about here today is you reflecting on your experience with him because other students uh, as you've even seen online um, at different periods of time they may have studied with him he may have you know varied it a little bit but the the basics of course are solid he's been doing that basically it's over and over and over I, I see I've been reading some blogs and things and it's the same stuff and everybody is so thankful they went through it you know because and it's it's very methodical and it's very slow moving. It didn't really care about speed. It was more so, getting the right motions and the feel. And for all of you students out there watching uh, who should be really interested in this method and what Chad has to say, there's a very important part of it that we've got to bring up because what else did uh, Murray tell you you needed to do if you're going to be a student? <laughs> Sorry, what you, we talked about a lot of things in the office. Oh, I, what, what I needed to do. One of the more important ones. <laughs> How much time do you need to practice? Oh, well, that's right. When you studied with him, he, you didn't take weekly. You took an hour lesson every two weeks because to get through the material, you needed to spend a minimum of two hours a day. Two hours a, a day. day. Every day. And he had been teaching so long. You know, I, I remember one, I went in for one lesson, and I hadn't practiced enough. And he was very, very old school very no-nonsense, and I just hadn't practiced enough, and I started to play, and he just looked at me and said, so you didn't get much practice in this, these last two weeks? And I said, no. I said, what, under two hours a day? And I said, yeah. And he said, why are you wasting my time? I said, I've got, I've got a whole list of, you know, another six months of students just waiting to get in here. Why would you do that? You know, why would you do that to yourself? It was a very, you know, it was a big wake-up call. And at 12 yeah. or 13, that was probably even <laughs> yeah. a bigger wake-up call. For sure, <laughs> yes, it certainly was. But, and, he, but and, he was right. You just have to spend the time doing it, and it had a, a, an amazing payoff. Because all, and you could feel your hands getting better, things were getting faster, and most importantly, everything getting easy. Things that were, you thought were being very difficult, all of a sudden, were, they were just easy. It was, you didn't have to think about it. Even a couple of things I showed you in the office, it's, it's another way to look at things that drummers think that are hard, but um, his approach made everything simple, and he had a, even a way of teaching of certain order rudiments, because if you could play one, well, then you could play five others. You just didn't know it. And even though he was more involved in building the machine, you showed me some things where he kind of tricked you into musically learning how to play in other times and other fields mm -hmm. by using those body motions. Sure, and um, yeah, he just had a great approach. He had a little saying he would say, I, I teach your brain and your hands will follow. I teach your brains and your hands will follow. That's, I love that. Which is great. He, he, loved, you know, he loved you questioning his method, too, because he, he thought it's not valid unless it, it can be justified. You know? and, and, and practicing two hours a day, it's not just like a teacher says, I want you to practice a half hour a day, and then you sit in your practice room and decide, well, what no, am specific. I going to do today? There's specifics. There's uh, single strokes. For the entire time, and pretty much for the rest of my life, it's, it's a, a method of playing three different tempos, five minutes each. So 15 minutes 15 a day? 15 minutes of single strokes, yeah. That's just what you do. Then you go into the roll stroke exercise. Well, he taught you step by step, but eventually it becomes a half hour exercise. So that's just, there's 15 minutes, there's a half hour. And, and then it would be the books you're working on, or uh, you know, going through the rudiments, or both. You, know. you needed the two weeks. You needed the two weeks to practice. In order to get good, he would nail you when you came back if you were yeah. an hour and 45 minutes practicing. <laughs> well, he just knew. He had taught so many years. And, I mean, and you know, when I took from him, he had retired from the film business. He was an amazing, uh, he started off at, 
it's fascinating if you go on, online and see his, his history. As a, he started off at RKO being the Traps drummer, you know, in, and he, he back then, this is in the 30s, um, he was playing for radio shows with a, the Traps kit, timpani and mallets and everything. He was a good mallet player too, and sound effects. The drummers had to do sound effects back then. And then he started building his own sound effects. RKO started getting the film. They hired him as a sound effects artist. Did King Kong it was his first movie, the original King Kong as a sound effects artist. Then he started running the sound department at RKO. Then moved to other movie studios and um, eventually, being a, it, uh, he had a whole career as a sound. A sound engineer, and he won an Oscar for doing sound for Hello Dolly. He did sound for many, many. Uh, he did sound for Sound of Music. Um, he was an innovator. He was one of the first people who who synced up three-track machines. He wanted to separate them, have multi-track to record the orchestra of sound of music. So he was a very brainy guy. He recorded the mu He recorded the sound for uh, Two Hundred Motels, which was a Frank Zappa movie. He was the first person who told me about Frank Zappa. So um, he has an amazing history. So that's a whole other side of his thing. But he had retired from the film business, and he wanted to. Uh, I think he wanted to get back into drums again. So, so he, he played just, it in earlier years as a, as a drummer. Yeah, a absolutely, as a drummer and mallet player. Yeah, and, and apparently he was quite good. I believe he took from Billy Gladstone. Um, I was wondering where his heritage is that he learned and then passed on. And obviously he, you know, figured out this tremendous method. Yeah, and I don't know how much was handed down to him. Um, it would be interesting to, to research that as well. Well, that's so. part of the mantra here on Drum Channel, is to go to the luminaries and Dig deep. hand things <laughs> down. right? And, and I'm as excited as everybody is out there, I think, to get into a little bit more detail and some exercises so we, yep. can, we can go through these. And you mentioned that article. Also, we'll have, uh, this is our introduction to your experience with Murray, but we'll mm -hmm. have a download of an article that was in Modern Drummer, which will fill you in a lot uh, about Murray. And it yeah. gets into a little bit of detail on some of his, uh, his method. Teaching philosophy of, of and, his, and his method, and um, he gives a few clues about um, how he goes about teaching certain rudiments you know, from other ones, things like that. Well, we're going to come right back, and we'll get into our first exercises here with, with Chad's insight into his life and experience with, with Murray Spivak. Thanks, Don. Be right back. <laughs> 